So a while back, I put the Windcamp antenna bracket and the Windcamp cage on my radio, and I found out that the two don't play well together. And so Windcamp came out with a new model, the RC2, which is supposed to solve that problem. And so today I'm gonna to try and put this thing on and figure out what's good or what's bad about it. The original Windcamp antenna mount is right here, and it is hanging off the back of the radio, and it really does add some depth to the unit. I mean, that's that's full screen there. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of bulky. It's a it's a nice device. If you have the radio sitting, it will rest on the on the work surface behind the radio, and you can mount a decent antenna on there. It has a separate ground stud. It connects in through a normal screw hole that's already on the radio. But let's go ahead and move this over right away. There's another modification that I did. I took one of those S beaners that you get and I used that for the strain relief. So I can actually very quickly remove the um, speaker mic from the setup. Let's get that out of the way. Disconnect, disconnect. One, two, all right, speaker mic is now gone. And let's get this old wind camp mount off by removing the ground screw and the BNC connector, and we are free. So this is the Windcamp RC1 done, and now let's get the Windcamp RC2 done. They gave me a spudger. Why do I need a spudger? That's an interesting question. They gave me a new ground screw, an Allen wrench, and a regular screw. There's a bracket, there's a bracket, and there's a right angle BNC adapter. That's pretty solid. All right, so let's dig in here a little bit. Start pulling parts out. So right angle SO239 to BNC plug. That's in there tight. Could you imagine being the person in the factory that's got to shove that thing in the bag all day long? That's in there very tight. Get that out of the way. And is this plastic or is this aluminum like everything else they make? Oh, it's aluminum, excellent. It's got a, it's got a tilt degree meter, zero to 20 degrees, a tilt meter. And then there's a lock and unlock. We'll have to see what we're locking there. But curiously absent are instructions. That's all right, I wouldn't have read them anyway. Here's another angle bracket. And here is the ground screw. Are these the same ground screws? I don't know this one. The new one's a hair shorter, okay? And it says M4 by 16 millimeter, and the old one says M4 by 12 max. Okay, so let's see, how does this go together? So that would go in there, and that would go there. Oh, neat. And that goes there. Okay. It's all coming together now. Let's get this set screw backed out. Let's get the antenna mount mounted up. Okay, so in order for this to rotate freely, it needs to have some freedom. Let's, uh, I still don't understand this smudger. Let's get this thing screwed in place.
and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. A long screw. All right, so in order for this to rotate freely, there's this gap here between the two of them. And it's interesting. Set that to zero. Done. And we have our ground screw here and we have our set screw there. All right, so that takes care of that. Let's bring up the radio again. We'll move the ground screw out of the way. Okay, maybe this is what the spudger is for. Nope. All right, so that's finally on. Seems a little tight. Let's loosen this up so we can move the connector in. And right, that takes care of that. And now there's no real room for that strain relief adapter thing, is there? And I don't know if I was ever really happy with the strain relief thing anyhow. Okay, you can have it come out of the bottom now. Is that gonna work? No, because the, there it is. Okay, that works. I'll leave it on there just in case I happen to decide I like it later on in the future. Alright, so the mount is on, and now you can see that it's tilted back a bit, and so we'll need to rotate this connector screw here. Does it help in any way? Okay, yep, there we go. So I can have that go vertical like that. Let me get an antenna. Hang on. Alright, so now I have the... HYS NLR2 antenna. Let's get this off of the BNC adapter that it's on. This is a, uh, a silver SO239 to BNC adapter that I found at a ham fest somewhere a while back. And then we can put this antenna on. And now you can rotate it so that it's more vertical or not vertical, right about there. Looks good with this. And I need to tighten this down. And then we can lock this in place. All right, and I still haven't really used the spudger for anything, but there's no instruction, so I don't know what I'm supposed to use it for. And it is now compatible with the Hamgear 3D 3D printed case. So let me rearrange this and get this case off and put the ARC 705 case back on and we'll see if it is compatible with that as well. Hang tight. I'm always a big fan of wherever possible putting the screws back in so that you don't lose them. So I have these four screws that are floating and I hope I don't lose those between changing one case over and back and so on. Now let's get the ARC 705 case back in business. And this is it. Let's see if we can get this thing together without taking the antenna mount off. We could not do that before. And it looks like we can do that now, which is pretty awesome. 
I'm a big fan of that. That way. And what I ran into before was this corner. You see how this one here is nice and flush and properly set up? And this one here sticks out a bunch. This one sticks out a bunch because the RC1 adapter didn't properly fit through the backside. There was some interference caused by that. So now it looks like that interference is solved. Let's verify that. So let's grab this one here. Nope. is back in its original ARC 705 case. I do like the Hamgear 3D case. I haven't really decided which one is better or worse, and I don't really think it's a fair test anyway, because this is aluminum, and this one is 3D printed. This one's red, so it's automatically better, no matter what. Um, but there you have it, the RC2 versus the RC1. Um, I'm going to miss this ground screw because I use this for counterpoise all the time, but there isn't any reason why you can't take this and use this for your counterpoise. Back it off a hair, stick a spade connector in there, and you're good to go. And maybe do what uh, Ham Radio Dude does and stick a spade connector with a flying uh, Anderson Power Pole connector off of it to connect up your counterpoise. So lots of options. There you have it. Let's get some beauty shots of what this thing looks like with the what the ARC 705 looks like with the RC2, the proper setup. And now we're back for a problem that I think they might have solved, but this might still be a, a longer term problem. So the good, the bad, and the ugly. The ugly here is that this adapter makes it impossible for you to plug in your speaker mic at all. So I know some of you folks like to have the, the, the microphone set up as a microphone and use the front facing speaker. But now you're kind of not going to really have a choice. There really isn't any easy way to get in there and plug those guys in because this is in the way. So the first thing we're going to have to do is take this thing back off. Those connectors are pushed down there pretty hard. You can see how they're they're bent up in there. Yeah, there's a little bit of a, a witness mark there. I don't know if I like that solution. I certainly know I don't like that you need to make that solution. <laughs> okay, let's keep on rolling, see where we get. 
Well, that was completely unintentional, but totally necessary to have that S beaner in there now. All right, let's take it over for another beauty shot with the microphone setup. I'm still, I'm still puzzled on this thing. I don't know how they could make the ARC 705, the, the cage that goes around the outside, which is pretty awesome in its own right. I like it a little bit better than the POV cage because it has backside protection. And they make the RC1, which I think came out first, the RC1 antenna bracket and now the RC2 antenna bracket. So the RC1 antenna bracket came out first which they had the benefit of having already in existence when the ARC 705 cage came out and the two are incompatible. The RC2 came out second after the ARC 705 and it's better, but the speaker microphone connection thing right here, that bugs me. That, that really bugs me a lot, actually. I didn't like the flap that ICOM had put on there to begin with. Um, and I was kind of on the fence about taking it off or leaving it on. So finally I took it off to get it out of the way. Now I've got this kind of janky microphone and speaker setup, and I I guess I can still, I can kind of work in there and get that unplugged. So yeah, now I can slightly easier, but still kind of a pain in the butt, unplug the speaker mic so I can use the speaker front panel instead. Um, ultimately, I don't know. I don't even know what Icom was thinking with having a sideways mounted antenna port instead of a top mounted antenna port or a top firing antenna port. But who knows, I don't make these products, I don't make these decisions, I just make videos about things that should make me happy. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. There's links to the ARC 705, the Hamgear 3D case, the red 3D printed case that I had on there, the RC1 and the RC2. They are quality components. All of these things are quality components, but WinCamp especially, WinCamp when you're making products for a radio that you make products for, those products should work together very easily. And I don't understand why they don't. I mean, they did a better job with this, the RC2 and the ARC 705 working together, but the three things don't seem to work together with the 705. So I'm still scratching my head. Either way, there is a video over there that I think you will like next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.